Hello and welcome everybody. In this tutorial, we will spotlight on the Pulse Supervisor. So here you may see the HTTP plugin and attached pool of worker to it. Every created pool of workers has an attached supervisor, if specified in the configuration. The first option is max jobs. If used, max jobs limits the number of requests one worker can handle. If you have three workers, like in my configuration, every worker of these three may handle one request called jobs here. So let's have a look at the little demo. We will start with runner with our simple supervisor configuration. And let's comment our supervisor to have a clear results. Okay, let's start. As you can see here, we have three workers allocated. And let's make one request. We can see successfully returned result. And we may see in the logs that workers stopped and it was killed because a lot number of requests it can handle is only one. So let's increase it to 10, for example, and then use a supervisor. So next is the supervisor option. It contains several configuration parameters to watch. The first of them is max worker memory in megabytes. It limits the maximum memory consumed by the every particular worker. If zero, there is no memory limit. So let's have a look at the little demo. In this demo, we will modify our worker code to consume a lot of memory and look at it. So let's uncomment this part of code. And uh, as we can see here, we will allocate a lot of memory here. And let's comment other options. All three workers allocated successfully. And let's also have a look at the workers. So as we can see here, we have three successfully allocated workers. And let's make a request. As you can see here, we have a successfully returned result. And in our logs, we can see that the max worker memory is reached. So that's because we used a lot of memory and only after the successfully response returned, it will be stopped and restarted by the runner. Let's have a look at our workers table. As you can see here, one worker allocates 30 seconds ago. So that's, this is our worker which allocate a lot of memory. One important thing here that the max worker memory is a soft limit. It means that until successful result will be returned to, to the user, the worker will not be killed. So our next option is exec TTL in seconds. So let's comment our max working memory and use the other section. This is a hard limit, which means that if a worker executes a request more than that limit, error will kill the process and start a new one. So let's restart our Roadrunner and start it again with the exec TTL option. And let's modify our worker code and simulate a long running activity here, like sleep 10 seconds. As you can see here, the number of seconds allowed to run for this worker is only five. Let's start it and let's send the request. As you can see here, there is no response. And from the log, 
we may see that the worker stopped and will be restarted, and the reason that exact TTL timeout elapsed. And we also can see the like our internal server error. We can see that the status 500, worker stopped, and new one allocated to replace it. If we see the worker table, we may see that the one of the workers allocates a not long time ago. So, okay, the following options are very similar to each other. I mean, idle TTL and TTL. So, TTL means how much time is allowed to have a PHP worker running, starting from the allocate. On the other hand, idle TTL starts counting from the last execution. So, let's see at the demo. Let's use a TTL equal to 2 seconds and start the runner. And let's remove the slip. As you can see here, our workers will be reallocated every 2 seconds. So, because time allowed to run for it, it too is two seconds. And let's use idle TTL for one second. So as you can see here, there is no reallocation because idle TTL starts counting from the last execution. Okay, let's execute a request. As we can see, we have successfully returned response. And we can see that the idle TTL reached. And internal event name is event TTL. And we can see that the worker stopped and allocated a new one to replace it. The last option, which you may see from this configuration, is watch tick. Watch tick means how often to check all these parameters. In our case, by default, it's equal to one second, but we can specify another time here to not very frequently run the check. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.